Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Streamhack Summer Quarterfinals match between Navi and Dignitas. And this is game two of the best of three series. And if you have not watched the previous game, click that bottom left hand link below that will direct you to game number one because I will be spoiling the results. Dignitas managed to beat Navi with a very, very well calculated strategy. It was a pretty action intensive game for a Dignitas game. But in the end, Dignitas could not apply enough pressure to AUI's Morphling, and the Doombringer just really shut down. Of a gyrocopter or Dendi's puck whenever he really needed to. So Dignitas with a 1-0 advantage, and if they win, they get themselves a spot in the money, and meanwhile, Navi's streak of utility at DreamHack will continue. So we're gonna have to see who, if Navi can bounce back or if Dignitas will be strong enough to move on. As this time they have the first pick, and we'll see who decide to go with it. They are once again respecting Puppy's Chen, and they're gonna get rid of it for now. Keep in mind, since they do have first pick, it's likely that they won't ban out the Barada. And Dignitas is one of those teams who likes to pick Tree. And the deal with Tree is either you're a team that likes to pick it or it doesn't like to pick it. Because you saw in the Alliance vs. Mouse games, Tree was not picked nor banned in any of the games. But in Quantic and Liquid, the Tree was almost a permanent fixture. With Navi ban the Batrider, we're going to see Dignitas open up with the Darkseer choice rather than getting the Tree in on their side. So they like to have that versatility that Universe's Darkseer gives them. And Dignitas, I think Darkseer is pretty much their trademark hero because it's a mid-game hero. It, that's when it does the most of its work, and Universe just plays it phenomenally, as his walls are really, really impressively placed, and overall do a lot of havoc in teamfight engagements. We all will have to see how Navi responds. Dignitas bound the Spectre, so we'll see if they go with the Gyrocopter pick once again. Dignitas proved themselves quite able to deal with the Gyrocopter, but now you're gonna secure themselves with the Gyrocopter once again, and this time they're gonna get it. Rubik for Kroki, who played a pretty solid Visage in Game 1, but Rubik is the hero that he's become most known for, and it's a bit surprising how far Rubik has fallen out of favor these days for a lot of teams. So we're going to see how Dignitas responds with these opening two choices. Keep in mind, after this pick, the second band phase will commence. So Dignitas, they're probably going to look to pick up, I guess, one of their two supports. They're going to pick up Jakiro, so they really, really like having that really strong setup of teamfight engagements with the Darkseer and Jakiro combination. And be assured, if, Nav if Dignitas didn't pick up the Jakiro, Navi would have most likely banned it, since that combination is incredibly powerful for Dignitas. But this time, since Navi have a Rubik, they have a couple ways to deal with it. They can potentially steal Ice Path themselves, they can steal Vacuum, they can steal Wall, and overall try to get the team fight back on their side. Navi saying enough is enough. AUI, please don't own us with Morphling once again. That Morphling just proved to be ridiculously survivable and only died once in the entire game up against some pretty strong damage dealers on the side of Navi. And this time, Navi, their opening choices, they do a decent amount of damage, but not really comparable to a Visage pick the Rubik is. And Dignitas gun about the split pushing menace that is a nature's prophet. So right now Dignitas have their offlane hero as well as their support or one of their two supports. And Navi have their hard carry with the Gyrocopter as well as Kuroki playing the Rubik as support. So Navi probably will look to pick up their offlane as well in the next phase. And maybe even their mid lane, maybe leave the support for the last choice. I'm not too sure. But Navi gonna get rid of the Doom as well. Man, a lot of respect being shown to Dignitas after that game one victory. And yeah. Navi may not accustomed to playing against those heroes at this moment, Navi but Dignitas gonna get rid of the Enchantress, recognizing that they don't have the first pickup after the second man phase ends, and rather than give it up to Puppy, we're just gonna get rid of the Enchantress entirely. So we'll have to see what Navi responds with. Are they gonna get their offlaner? They should probably pick it up in this phase before Dignitas get rid of any more offlaners, although only two offlaners have been removed, and Darkseer was taken from Dignitas, so I guess it's not really the highest priority. And we're gonna have to see how Navi decide to lane their lane as well. Five it's not really the best idea, in my opinion, to let Dignitas sort of free farm, but Darkseer is such a menace in the offlane position that he can pretty much be any solo matchup. Uh, unless Tavos does do 1v1 Gyrocopter, but I haven't really seen too many aggressive Navi Funic tri lanes for the most part. Usually, like they, usually Navi likes to defensive try lane with Havost and leave Funic on his own in the solo offlane. So maybe that means a sign of Navi predictability? I'm not too sure. But that's just what I've seen thus far in this patch. And we'll see if that remains consistent in this next game. But Navi going to dip into a bit of their reserve time to try to figure out what they want to do here. As they definitely have a lot of options. Sure, a lot of the jungle threats have been removed, but Puppy is a very versatile player. And he played an overall solid Nyx Assassin, but I mean, 
in the end, when you're up against Morphling and Doom, there's only so much an assassin can do, especially when Morphling picked up such a fast Lincoln Sphere. So we'll see if now he can pick up more uh, dynamic support to secure for Puppy, since I think they want to have Puppy make a bigger impact than he did do in Game 1. And that getting some early aggression off onto Dignitas is really the best way to go about it, since Dignitas, they like to win in the mid-game, and right now their two opening choices definitely are mid-game centric yeah, picks. Man. And now we're going to pick up the Clockwork from Funix, so this will most likely be Funix in the offlane with the Clockwork, and not a mid lane Clockwork or anything like that. And we're going to have to see. This is, yeah, offlane Clockwork most likely, because Clockwork versus Darks, so I have to think it favors Darks are quite tremendously. So now we are once again going to likely defense to try, and so we'll see if Dignitas recognize that and secure themselves heroes that are suited to dealing with Clockwork in the offlane. I mean, yeah, Jakiro can do alright, but he's not really fast enough to harass Clockwork too much, and Clockwork has a decent amount of HP, so Dignitas might have to secure themselves a carry that can do a bit of harassment of his own. And that's what a good thing about AOI, he likes to harass people out of the lane, because you know his experience is all relative, as long as the universe gets a lot of experience in jungle and he shuts down the offlaner. I mean, yeah, he can miss some CS here and there, but as long as his team gets a level advantage, that's really, really what AUI is aiming for. He knows his farm will come once his team gets a level advantage and then secures himself in the mid-game. So Dingtas is going to dip into a lot of their reserve time. They're going to secure themselves a Luna. Navi's turn to really, really weird choice in my opinion. I don't know if Dingtas... I mean, Luna is a very strong team fight hero. Synergizes reasonably well to Kira's also Dark Seer since he clips will just own Navi if the vacuum combination with the Ice Path is successful, but Luna's not very survivable. I don't think she necessarily does that well against Gyrocopter, and is really more of a early to mid game carry. She can scale well into the late stages of the game, but in order to maximize the effect of Luna Blessing, you want to get some push going onto the other team's tower, so I'm not too sure if Ding Tass, we have the lineup that can really help out Luna in this game. So maybe they're going to farm up Luna a bit more and try to go for late game rather than going for the traditional drums BKB build. Maybe they'll go for, I don't know, not drums, maybe BKB into Mantis style rush. Ten but remaining. not really too sure of this Luna choice for Dignitas. I just feel like this hero is remaining. not suitable to Dignitas style with their current backup choices. And they're going to get themselves a Treant as well. This lineup is really, really interesting. As well, Dignitas have now said... We're going early game, we're going to live and buy, die by the early game in this game, as now they have the living armor, but Enigma and Clockwork can Jower Cup do reasonably well against living armor. I mean, sure, it's going to be incredibly Five annoying for Navi as a team to deal with, but Eidolons can burn through those living armor charges very quickly, Five Clockwork and Bounty Assault can do that as well, and Jower Cup Rocket Barrage, I mean, yeah, it negates a lot of rockets, but still, it Reserve accomplishes time. the end goal of ripping to, through that living armor. So, we're going to have to see how this trend pick works out. I'm a bit iffy on it at this moment. And I feel like Trinity just doesn't do that much damage. And yeah, you have the Dark Seer, Jakiro, Luna combination. And you have the Overgrowth to hold people in place. So I guess Dingtoss are just really relying on the early game pressure that can sort of scale well into the early portions of mid-game and just really execute a flawless team fight. I think that's what they're banking on. But... I don't know, if Navi managed to secure themselves an early game advantage, then Dignitas, it's going to be really difficult for them to come back from, since they don't really have the heroes in place, since Trigan doesn't recover very well in an early deficit, and Luna doesn't either, because she's very, very squishy, and she can't really farm as well. Yeah, she's relatively mobile, but she doesn't have a built-in escape mechanism, which a lot of other hard carries do like to have. Navi's turn to pick. Navi, once again, banging out the Pugna, so they want to get rid of the pusher, and... I guess they really just don't like playing against Ward or the Nether Blast, but... <laughs> I mean, Dignitas, yeah, they need their mid-hero. I don't know if Snaking would have picked up the Pugna. Maybe Navi has scrimmed against Dignitas, and Pugna is one of the favorites of Dignitas' in-in-houses. Maybe they had a nice discussion in DreamHack, and AUI are way too sexy to let something slip, saying, oh man, we love Pugna. And I love Pugna too, Ten but... Seconds. Seconds. Yeah, I guess it could have worked out in this game if Dignitas wanted to apply a lot of early pressure. Fiend. You know, Navi going to get themselves a Fiend. Shadow Fiend for Dandy. This is pretty... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fun to see. It's been a while since we've seen Daddy Shaofing. Sure, he's not as notorious as like Yafits or Burning or Mushi or Yamate or <sighs> Zo or even Lotus Shadowfiend, but his Shadowfiend is still really, really strong. So we're gonna have to see how this works out as Navi they picked themselves up a relatively squishy solo mid 
But who are Dignitas going to challenge him with? I mean, there's Puck and there's Queen of Pain left in the pool. And Puck could do pretty well. Five Queen of Pain could do pretty well as well. Queen I'm not too sure. They're going to get themselves the Queen of Pain, so they want to have that mid lane presence. But at a certain point, Xiaofin will outlast the Queen of Pain no matter how much she tries to keep him out. And the key is just living armor, just constantly being applied to Queen of Pain and just sort of ignoring the Xiaofin auto attacks. I think that's the main reason why they picked up the Queen of Pain, as well as applying a lot of early game pressure. But Dignitas, even though they have a lineup that can go late, they want to win as early as possible. They won't match up against a Gyrocopter, as well as a Dendi Xiaofin and an Enigma. Because once that black hole goes, there's nothing that can cancel aside from an overgrowth once Enigma does pick up that BKV. So I'm liking Navi's lineup a little bit more. I feel like it's a bit more versatile. And Dignitas is, I don't know if they're making the greatest usage of the tree end choice in this game. But again, we're going to have to see how the strategy works out. Because Dignitas have known to pull out these sort of oddball heroes and make them work. I mean, we saw Doom and Morphling work, even though Morphling has been trending quite highly as of late. So, time to use the players and the teams on the side of Manavi. We're gonna have Puppy playing the Enigma once again, pulling Dendi. In this case, it's fully warranted because Shafin needs as much regeneration as possible. Havos is gonna play the Gyrocopter. Dendi is playing the Shafin. Kuroki is playing the Rubik. And Funic is gonna be playing the Offline Cloud. We're gonna be on the side Dink We're gonna have Way Too Sexy playing the Tree and Protector. Fogged is gonna be taking care of the Chikira once again. AUI 2000 will be controlling the Luna. Universe is gonna be piloting the Dark Sun. Snaking is gonna be in the middle lane with the Queen of Pain, and it seems like Snaking was pulled a little bit as well, in anticipation of Dendi getting pulled. So Dendi, it still will be a relatively hard matchup. Queen of Pain's base damage is a lot higher than Shadow Fiend's by a pretty sizable amount, and Living Armor will just make it so that even once Dendi does get that level 3 or level 5 online, those harassments on Snaking won't be that powerful. And since Navi aren't aggressively trialing, those Living Armors will pretty much be resisted exclusively reserved for snaking or healing up the bomb tower should now he decide to apply some early pressure. Begins. And we're going to see Enigma deny an early creep wave and allow Denny to get the creeps back into his favor up the hill and might force snaking to miss a couple auto attacks and get the nice level advantage. And once Shafin hits that level 2, he'll have a bit of an easier time. Good ammo. But look for snaking just to play super aggressive at the early stages of this lane, already being given some living armor right off the bat. I'm not too sure how effective the Slamming Army will be used, but I guess it's to mitigate some any potential idle on harassment. As Dendi gonna try to get some last hits, I already picked up one, so well done. I mean, once Xiaofin starts getting going in the lane, it just becomes so difficult to contest last hits. Even if you can't, so too if bad. you can deal with the harassment, the last hitting favor will always be in favor of Xiaofin once he manages to get a sufficient number of levels and sufficient number of souls. You can see already he has 55 damage, or 57 damage. And snaking, that damage ga gap is closing very rapidly. But snaking, applying a lot of early pressure, this is precisely what he should do. And Queen of Pain, this is why she does win this matchup. Because if Dendi is just camped like this so aggressively, there's not too much Xiaofin can do. And keep in mind, snaking also has living armor, so it's pretty much just guaranteed to win this lane. You know, on the offlane, seems like Dignitas not controlled the creepy room as well as they could. They're pushing out the wave so it's snaking, or so way too sexy could get a double stack off. And then they'll pull the creep wave back, but Funic is going to receive at least level 2. I guess it's not the biggest deal, getting level 2 up on Clogger. But obviously you don't want to give any experience to the offlane if you don't have to. But Luna and Shakiro by themselves cannot kill a Clockwork quite simply. And even Trian, it's doubtful they can kill a Clockwork. So Funic going to hit level 2, but won't be able to get anything else for a bit. And way too sexy actually denying a lot of creeps. Not getting too much experience himself, since these creeps kill off the lane creeps very, very easily. I mean, he got a wolf in the centaur cap. These creeps just dominate the lane creeps so very easily. But Rocket Barrage trying to snipe a creep here and there. Won't be successful. You know, Universe is just going to rotate himself back to the jungle, recognizing the Navi with the jungle Enigma and the Rubik. <laughs> and the Gyrocopter would just be able to crush him if Enigma ever decides to venture out of the jungle, and even Telekinesis into Rocket Barrage could potentially kill Universe unless he gets a level 2, which he just managed to level 2. There he goes. You know, Funic picks up a haste stream, that's going to be very, very nice for him, as he is going to try to get as much experience as possible off the back of this. And you know, Dendi, not bothering to harass the Queen of Pain, just trying to get souls, and now his damage is starting to reach a very, very difficult, sort of, difficult to contest area. 
I know that's not fair yet. You know, <laughs> elegantly explained, but fuck it. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Starting to run out of Steve, all these Dota matches. But Snaking once again doing Lyra, and both heroes have picked up their bottle, and looks like Dendi has been able to keep up with Snaking in terms of harassment. And Dendi is just gonna have that bottle stay with him as it is slowed down. He wasn't saving the speed boost, so this car gonna be a bit slow, but it was able to give a ring of regeneration to Puppy, and he will get his soul ring up relatively soon. So, considering the pace of the game, I'm not too sure who it favors. I think it slightly favored Sting Toss in the early stages, but unless Trant manages to get levels, a lot of levels, he will fall off very, very rapidly if Sting Toss can't capitalize off the early advantage that Living Army gains them. And if Trant remains under level, then it'll start spiraling drastically in favor of Navi. Keep in mind, I think in a matchup between Gyrocopter and Luna, I think Gyrocopter does have the advantage because, I mean, he has more range with the Flak Hen. He can do a bit more consistent damage with his Rocket Barrage as well as Homing Missile. And as an AoE, whereas Luna doesn't level up her AoE ability until she manages to get everything else maxed out. So, Digging Dust, they have to do something early, but is the lap that can really accomplish that. Snaking actually being ushered away very, very successfully by Dendi as he managed to take control of the middle lane with the repeated usage of the Ball Crow. And Snaking has been able to heal himself up, but Mew on the top lane. Looks like there was engagement. Funnick found himself leech seed up, popped the cogs, but it looks like he will perish. First blood being picked up by Fogged. Nice secure kill being given to them by the clockwork in the off lane. A little bit of a misplay by Funnick. I guess he under or overestimated the power of cogs. And the leech seed was there, so Wei is actually getting a nice position. That is going to be very, very useful because that gives Tree some much needed experience. And that is going to allow him to get level 2 Living Armor, but Tree, I mean, Living Armor isn't free, although it's pretty much as close to being free as possible. But Navi, I think they're more than content to play this very, very passive style. They have the heroes that can make usage of these sort of passive picks, and they're going to apply some pressure to the bomb tower, and Digging Toss, their only sort of AoE creep clearing ability is on Fogged, and Fogged is just too bulky and slow of a hero to really go into this tower and get the successful defense. I mean, the Brokey means we can just charge in and pick up Fog, and that will be the end of the Jakiro. So this tower won't be able to be contested, and we are going to see a rotation by Universe, but still, Universe himself will have to be careful. He does have level 2 Surge, but no boot speed, so one Telekinesis into a couple Malphus sticks could be the end of Darkseer. And keep in mind, with the scaling of Malphus being reworked, it's a little bit sort of weird now, but it's more consistent sun in the early levels of the game. This tower getting pressured very, very hard, so Navi going to take a pretty significant gold advantage off of this, and I just want to look at the farm. It seems like Navi are winning in terms of farm as well, because Enigma is jungling so much more effectively than anybody else on the side. Dictus, bar the Dark Sir, Xiaofin is actually controlling the middle lane very, very well with his last hits as well as his shadow races as Snaking. Living Armor again can only do so much with Snaking. Gonna initiate onto Puppy. Puppy will likely be sacrificed to the side of Dignitas. Yes, he will die, but then he's gonna come in with the haste rune. That will prompt the immediate offensive rebuttal by Navi as Meow Snaking will be driven away. Dendi gonna get another raise. Beautifully placed raises by Dendi as he picks up a double kill, and that'll be a tier 2 tower, so Navi already taking a significant lead. And what can Trian do when his team gets behind? It's just very difficult to come back, especially with the Dignitas picks. I mean, their most mobile hero is Queen of Pain, but who's going to back him up? Darkseer? Okay, that's cool. And with Snaking dying, that's going to definitely hurt Dignitas quite a bit, because they really need Snaking to get off to a good start in order to fully maximize the potential of the armor. Because then, Snaking could just dive in and throw out all his nukes, but now, even if he dies and gets a sufficient level of living armor online, he won't be able to throw that much damage and won't have that much survivability. As Denny with a nice raise cancel going to preserve a bit of mana. And now Dendi, with that successful du double kill, is just going to have a significant landing advantage. You can see he's been able to get almost the max number of souls required, and he's almost two levels fully ahead of Dendi, or of Snaking. Pretty much one three quarters level ahead of Snaking at this point. You know, way too sexy, going to help out his buddy in the middle lane, but... I don't know if he really needs to be so close. I guess he wants to have the Leech Seed in case Snaking gets initiated on, so he can heal up his friend and allow him to escape. 
But yeah, Luna is not really pressuring anything at this point. Has been able to get a lot of farm. It is out farming everybody else on the map, but still, how much can he actually do? Is Rubik going to get the telekinesis off? Rubik actually already has level 6, so he can potentially steal living armor. Oh my god, what an ability for Kuroki to steal. I wasn't anticipating Rubik picking up such a fast level 6, but now he has living armor. I'm sure he's going to be very, very loath to let it go. He might give it up for Blink, but I can't imagine too many more spells. Actually, a lot of spells on Dinking Toss are really good to steal. Ice Path, <laughs> Surge, Vacuum, Snaking spells. But living armor might just be the best of everything. Although, I'm sure he wants level 3 living armor once Sway 2 Sexy does hit that magical level 5. But this is a pretty intense middle lane sort of do si -do. And I've got a favorite Navi in this because then he's still able to farm multiple areas of the map. He's able to farm this small wave of creeps and farm the middle lane. You know, most, again, I do favor him in a matchup against the Luna as he's got some phase boots. Will likely pick up a bracer, might finish the drums, then go straight into VKB. Very much a standard build up on the gyrocopter. And meanwhile, since Dictus Sports did rotate, Funnick is going to receive some much needed experience. It's going to make his way towards the arcane boots, and then he'll have a lot of mantis spam his rockets, which he did decide to max first, rather than getting a lot of us into the battery assault. Meanwhile, Dendy, since he can just clear creeps so much more effectively since, than snaking, is just going to constantly chip away at this middle tower with the help of Kuroki. And, I mean, yeah, you can living armor the tower, but still, it will get out damaged by Dendy's auto attacks. I feel like Shaofi does do pretty well in the middle lane up against the Triumph Protector. I see him smoking. Way too sexy, going to get trapped in the call down. There's really nothing you can do here, as he did attempt to get the Leech Seed off. But, again, just nothing could help him out in that situation, as an old club is already finished on a most. And yeah, Way 2 Sex was able to hit 05, but this is just looking grimmer by the moment for Dignitas, as I don't know if they Radiant's have the heroes to make a sensational attack. comeback. You know, Puppy gonna come in, Sting could potentially be in a lot of trouble, we'll be able to point away to safety, but I guess Navi weren't really even attempting to kill us, Snake. They just wanted to secure themselves control over this middle area to get themselves this middle tier 1 tower. And if that was the end goal, they are gonna be very successful in achieving that. You know, AOI going for the drums build, so he's going to go for a mid-game build, but Dyer's its effectiveness in this game is going to be severely doubtful. And Universe, he's been able to farm reasonably well, but still not Radiant that close to a mechanism. Actually, I'll pick it up in 900 gold, and Puppy will pick it up in about 700 gold at this rate. So the mechanism time is going to be relatively even, despite Puppy, you know, just giving all his regen to Dandy for the most part. So hey, right, we'll have the drum ship towards him relatively soon. Fogged, not even level 6, so it doesn't have the max prize. There will be a team fight. Looks like way too sexy once again getting initiated on, and that means no living armor will be in the picture for the next while. Snaking attempting a Sonic Wave, but decided against it. Denny will be in a lot of trouble, but he has a haste rune. He's just gonna motor on out of there. There's nothing Dignitas can do. They even force a TP from AUI 2000, and that's gonna mean Havos will be able to surpass Luna by a great degree. And this Shadow Fiend just putting in work, Dendi. Just clearing out the creep waves. We'll have a really, really fast BKB. Oh my god. This BKB rush on Shaofin will just make him very difficult to stop. And even if it's a very early BKB, I think Navi have just realized there's not too much Dignitas can do in terms of killing them off. So if we get an early BKB, we can potentially just win the game in a matter of moments. You know, Vos is going to pick up his own BKB relatively soon. Uh, it's the reason why I said early BKB, it's a decent idea. I mean, usually Shaofin wants to get the treads, might go for Shadowblade or Yasha, and then go for the BKB in order to preserve the BKB charges. But in this game, it seems like he doesn't care as Kuroki once again going to steal. Well, we see. Not as effective, but still going to help buff up his add-on. So I guess that's something. And Dendi getting dangerous close to that BKB. Dignitas, can he defend this tower? Add-ons just are so good up against this sort of lineup can just push in relatively risk-free. And anyway, I can't really do anything but just auto-attack as much as possible. He did get an early point to the Moonblaze either than Maximum Lunar Blessing because he knows he won't really be for the team. He wants to push up troops as fast as possible. But that is going to prompt a rotation by Navi as they do not want to give up any towers Radiant's since that tower might give an opening attack. to get themselves back in the game. And yes, the score is only 4-2, but I feel like Dinktoss are just in a severe deficit as AY. We'll take a couple auto attacks, but should be okay. I'm gonna get buffed up by the living armor to prevent any sort of other harassment. And Navi damages the tier 2 sufficiently in the middle lane. They're gonna instead turn their sights towards this top tier 1 tower. And 
do digging toss happily takes to secure it. Trian, I think, wants that level 6 snaking. Only level 8, whereas Dendi is Dyer's level 9 and Novos is level 10. Attack. And checking out the goal graph, I mean, Navi out farming and out towering. The side of Dingtas managed to secure themselves almost a 6k goal advantage, which is quite big at 13 minutes in the game. And it's gonna get bigger after this tower has been claimed by Havost. Experience advantage, not that impressive, but again, with the Treant lineup who doesn't really get better as the game goes on, it's looking a lot worse. Snake getting himself caught, gonna get himself lifted as Ice Path will be used. Can Yubers get a vacuum? Only has level 1 vacuum, it seems like Eclipse really didn't do too much. Kuroki, what did he steal? He stole Eclipse, as I guess it was on Kula. No, it was Lucent Beam, as he already used it. Rubik did pick off the Dark Suit in the end, and now AI will most certainly die. Black Hole will be used by Puppy, as he does manage to get fogged, as well as the Luna. Just managed to position himself outside the Ice Path, and Nabi just gonna destroy Ding Tuss in the city fight. Wait two seconds, he's gonna die to one last Lucent Beam by Kuroki. And Navi has hit that oh so coveted orange sound, which means they are complete control of the game. They did not lose any men that team fight. Funnick got a strong initiation, zone out snaking, kept him out of the battle for quite a long time. Forced him to blink out defensively, and in the end, snaking did die. Navi gonna take another tower. BKB was used by the Shaofi, and BKB is now up on the gyrocopter. I'm honestly not too sure if Dignas could come back from this. Top tower has fallen. As I mean, they have wall, they have darks here, but the level of vacuum is just simply not sufficient at this point to get a really, really good vacuum wall combination. And that's the reason why a lot of teams don't get wall level until level 10, because they want to max the vacuum. Since the vacuum alias as well as the vacuum range is quite pitiful until you manage to get it to level 4. But it's going to be difficult for Universe to come by this experience. He's going to have to take the jungle, but the jungle needs to go to AUI because he is the only hope of Ding Tusk getting themselves back in the game. And he is just being out farmed all across the map. Xiao being probably the fastest farm in the game once he gets going. He just raises creeps down instantly. Assuming, of course, he has sufficient mana to use all his abilities. Kuroki, gonna have that dagger up. Puppy, we'll have the mechanism up now. And even though Ding Tusk got zero kills in the last fight. It's going to be even harder for them to get a kill in the upcoming team fight. Dyer's you know, those going to command an Alpha Wolf creep to give themselves a nice Dyer's damage aura, and they're going to rotate themselves down to Roshan. They should be able to take this relatively easily. And Dig Toss, I'm not too sure if they can test this, but I don't know if they have a choice. As they do have Darkseid, and Darkseid and Roshan can make miracles happen, but they are facing Enigma. I'll be an Enigma who doesn't have Black Soul, so a lot of his damage is negated. But now you're going to make a smart move, going to back off, smoke up, and might re-engage as well. And Ding Tuss, AY, where can he actually teleport into? I guess he can teleport into the middle tower, but without Eclipse, his damage potential will be severely lacking. And Ding Tuss, in the end, won't be able to contest this. And the universe could have been picking up levels, but now Phonic will just barely lift the hook. And Blink Dagger up on Kuroki. I don't know if it's been shipped towards him just yet. He said he got arcade boots as well as a point booster. Interesting decision. I guess he just wanted to tank up as much as possible. It seems like Navi, they want to end the game right now. Yeah, Navi, you recognize when they have an advantage. Crooks will get himself ice pads up. He could take a lot of damage. Overgrowth will be used back, or wall will be thrown down as well. Trapping a lot of Navi members, but Shalvi managed to get a huge Requiem off. Absolutely demolishes the universe. GG while played is called by Ding Toss. 16 minutes in the game. That was a thrashing and a half. If I've ever seen a stomp as that was just perfectly executed by Navi. They did not make any mistakes other than Funic making that slight, I guess, <laughs> over or under calculation of the Cog's potential on the top lane. And in the end, the draft was just not there for Digging Toss. I felt like this draft was just very. Alright, we have a lot of heroes that we like. Let's just grab them and just throw in a Luna there just because Morphling was banned out or something like that. But now we're going to tap the series in a commanding fashion, one to one. And Dignitas have got to be feeling the effects out of that. Me on Navi probably have a lot of momentum after that victory. So we'll see if Dignitas can re recover and play their game. And if not, Navi will move on. So thanks for watching, and I'll be back with Game 3 relatively soon. So peace out.